So today I'd like to talk about some sports injuries that can occur at the hip. A lot of times when we think of sports injuries, we think of injuries to the shoulder or to the knee. But as technology has evolved, we're recognizing a lot of injuries that can occur at the hip as well. The majority of the soft tissue injuries that occur at the hip are related to the ball and socket. The hip is a little bit different because it's a very constrained joint. The ball fits deep into the socket. And sometimes when we have athletes that put their bodies uh, in a difficult position, that ball can come up and can damage the edge of the socket. There's a rubber O-ring that goes around the edge of the socket, and that's called the labrum. And so a lot of times when we're talking about sports-related injuries to the hip, we're talking about injuries or tears of that labrum. Certain patients have less motion, and they can actually even damage the cartilage. And when we have less motion and rubbing of the ball into the socket, that's called impingement. Both of them are injuries that we now recognize a lot more as we're advancing in our technology and our ability to look at things with MRI. We're seeing a lot more injuries to those soft tissues. Hip arthroscopy has really evolved, I would say, over the last 10 to 15 years. Prior to that, it was a very, very rare procedure to be performed. About three-fourths of all the literature about non-arthritic injuries to the hip have occurred over the last 10 to 15 years. So really this is a field that's evolved and expanded for orthopedics relatively recently. One of the main differences with hip arthroscopy as opposed to arthroscopy of the other joints is that we have to create room between the ball and the socket. We use a special table to distract the ball and create a space so that we can put a camera in there. The camera's a little bit different as well. There's a 70 degree turn on it, so it's much more difficult. Instead of looking straight ahead, you're actually looking up. And so there's not that many people that do hip arthroscopy. It's kind of a, a smaller field um, of expertise. When we put that camera into the hip, it's small. It's about the size of a pen. So it's minimally invasive surgery, meaning that all of our incisions are really less than a centimeter or two. After we put the camera into the hip, we use another small incision to use an instrument. And with that instrument, we can put string or suture around the torn labrum, uh, and then we can use plastic tacks to tack the labrum back up to the edge uh, of the socket where it belongs. We can also use different instruments when we have that impingement or that less motion between the ball and socket to create more room and contour the ball, not the articular surface, but outside the articular surface so it stops hitting into the edge of the cup, allows more motion, and then allows an athlete to get back to many of their activities. Recovery time after a hip arthroscopy uh, most patients are out of pain within a few days. Uh, usually two or three days, most of the patients say they're off the pain medicines. We do protect the hip afterwards, and that's important to know. A lot of times we use a brace to hold the hip in a good position. We use crutches or a walker for two or three weeks, not because there's a ton of pain, but really to protect the area where we're working. Um, after that, we really take it easy for the first six weeks to allow soft tissue healing. And then after that six week mark, we work on range of motion and strength, really with a goal of return to sport and return to activities, impact activities, at about 12 weeks.